Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing VaxArch stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. VaxArt is a biotechnology company. The company is headquartered in South San Francisco, California and was founded in 1969. It started trading in 2018 and can be found on the NASDAQ, Mexican Bolsa, Deutsche Börse, and Zetra. It became a public company via a reverse merger. A reverse merger is when a private company becomes public by purchasing control of a public company. It is cheaper and quicker than going through the traditional IPO process. It develops oral vaccines that can be stored and shipped without refrigeration, eliminating the need for needle injection. Its COVID-19 vaccine is the only oral vaccine with clinical data, including T-cell, and mucosal responses. If the company is able to get FDA approval for its COVID oral vaccine, then this will vaccinate 19 million Americans who do not want to get a vaccine administered by needle. 70% of Americans prefer to take a pill instead of being injected by needle. If all COVID vaccines were in pill form, then we could vaccinate the country so much faster. It's faster because the pills can be mailed to each person's house, instead of everyone having to set up an appointment. It's also a lot cheaper because there's no need to pay medical staff to inject people. The company's vaccine, called VAST, can be used to prevent norovirus, seasonal influenza, respiratory virus, and human papillomavirus. They have the following vaccines in preclinical trial. HPV, RSV, RSV stands for respiratory, syncytial virus, influenza, and quadrivalent seasonal flu. In phase one trials are COVID vaccine and norovirus. They also have a vaccine in phase two. That's the monovalent seasonal flu. Phase one is testing drugs on healthy people and testing for safety, dosing, and side effects. Phase two is testing on a larger group of people and testing for efficacy of side effects. Phase 3 is testing on a new and wide demographic and testing for long-term effectiveness and also comparing to other drugs. If a drug passes Phase 3, then it goes to the FDA for approval before it can be marketed and sold to patients. The company announced this month it is proceeding to Phase 2 for its oral COVID vaccine. This article mentions the company spends $65 million annually. Once the company enters and passes phase three clinical trials, it will have to raise more cash because it will need to manufacture and market the vaccine. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 1 billion market cap. They're trading at 865 a share and they have 123 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they do have negative free cash flow every year since they're not really bringing in much revenue. Net income is the profit or loss of the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's also negative each year. Revenue is the sales for the company. And that's pretty low. It did peak in 2019 at 10 million. This is their income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. So most of their revenue in 2020 was from royalties. They also got 200 million from customer contracts and they got 886 million from non-cash royalties. They received royalty payments from the drugs Relenza and Inivir. These were drugs they acquired through a merger, but it doesn't look like they're gonna be receiving royalty payments on these drugs in the future. Below revenue is a cost of revenue and their main cost of revenue is research and development. And of course they have negative operating income each year since they're not bringing in much revenue. They have a small amount of debt on their balance sheet, so they pay $1.7 million of interest on their debt, and each year they do have negative net income. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash, because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. Of course, they have negative operating cash flow each year because they have pre-revenue on the vaccines they're developing. They don't spend too much in CapEx each year because most of the money is spent on research and development. So it's mostly spent on man hours, the doctors and the scientists doing research to develop the drugs, and then patient trials, and then the analysis of the results from the patient trials. 
They don't really have to buy expensive machinery, equipment, or real estate. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And of course, that's negative each year. So they're funding their business on capital stock. They issued $18 million in 2019, $111 million in 2020, and $200 million in the trailing 12 months. When companies have negative operating cash flow, they usually don't take out much debt because you really can't get good terms when you're pre-revenue. Plus, you have to pay the interest payments on your debt, and you'd have to go into more debt. When you take out capital stock, you don't have to pay the dividend payments. It's your option to pay dividends. This is the equity section of their balance sheet, and they have $200 million of equity. They raised $381 million from selling stock, and they lost $181 million from running their business. So they have about $200 million of breathing room until their next capital raise. Let's look at the capital structure. They have $200 million of equity, $6 million of debt. They're 97% equity, 3% debt. And their weighted average cost of capital is 7.89%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's $4.6 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $3.6 billion. We divide that by 123 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $29. We're trading at $8.65, so they're trading at a 70% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. It is hard to value this company, so I looked at different estimates from analysts and different reports I found, and I kind of combined them. That's how I came up with my future free cash flow estimates. If they get approval by the FDA for their oral COVID vaccine, then the stock will blast off. Simply, Wall Street values the company at $45 a share. They're saying it's 81% undervalued. Four analysts priced this stock, and the average price target was $12.50. This is where the stock has been trading the past 12 months. There was a short squeeze where it pushed the stock up about $25 a share, but it came right back down. So overall, it's been pretty flat the past 12 months, except for this one spike. They have a really low beta, 0.37, so the stock does not move too much. The stock has gone down 15% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 32%. The 52-week low was 350, and the high was 25. The stock is trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. This is a really active stock. Over 10 million shares are traded each day the past three months. Of the 123 million shares outstanding, 122 million are on float. 42% are held by institutions, and it has a really high short percentage. Over 17% of the shares are shorted. In the past three years, this stock has done really well, up almost 200%, much better than its industry and the market. Analysts are really bullish on this stock, projecting their earnings to grow 77%, their revenue to grow 83%. The biggest shareholder is State Street at 7%, then BlackRock, Vanguard, Savvy Management, and BML. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE because they have negative net income. They have hardly any revenue, so they have a terrible price to sales ratio. Their price to book is pretty good at 5.3 because they do have a lot of cash on their balance sheet. And they've done a bunch of capital raises, so they have a really high current ratio and quick ratio. They have over 180 million of cash on their balance sheet. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 16 companies in the same industry as Faxart. And if Faxart has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So we can't look at their PE. They have a really bad price to sales ratio. They are doing well in price to book because of that recent capital raise. They have a high current ratio. A lot of companies in this industry have negative earnings, so the average ROE is negative. They are lower than average in debt, and they're a pretty small company, $1 billion market cap. The average is $17 billion. So to summarize, I do have them trading at a 70% discount, but if it wasn't for the COVID variants, this company may be bankrupt right now. It did give them a lifeline, and it takes many, many years to get FDA approval for a drug or a vaccine. Fortunately, COVID vaccines are fast-tracked, so they're getting approval a lot faster. So it is kind of a gamble. If their oral COVID vaccine gets FDA approval, then you hit the jackpot. If it doesn't, you may be waiting a really, really long time to see any profits, if any at all. I rank their free cash flows 1 out of 10, their revenue 1 out of 10, and their ratios 1 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.